Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here, and today I'm going to be doing a video on functions and relations. Um, so the fundamental thing that we have to remember is that Algebra 2, we're learning all about different relationships with numbers and all about functions. So today we're going to learn about those. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs, okay? So a relation is a set of um, ordered pairs or inputs and output values. And we can look at relations or relationships with these inputs and output values several ways. We could look at them as ordered pairs, like I have here. We could look at them in a mapping, and a mapping actually takes these ovals and puts numbers as the inputs, and then correspondence, correspondent, corresponds it with an output in the right um, oval. You could also take ordered pairs and put them in a table of values. I do want to remind you table of values can go horizontally and vertically, so I could do this if I wanted to. And then I could also represent a relationship on a graph or a relation on a graph with some plotted points. All right. So we have to make sure that we understand a couple things about these input and output values. The independent variable is x, okay? And the dependent variable is y. Now, we normally write it x comma y when we're talking about an ordered pair, but I want to remind you that sometimes you'll see it with other variables. The um, it's always alphabetical order. A is going to be the x cor corresponding x, B is going to be the corresponding y, okay? So why is it important to identify an independent and a dependent variable? Well, the y being dependent means it depends on whatever x is, okay? So when I'm trying to identify which one's the x and which one's the y, I ask myself, what depends on what? Why? Well, because y always depends on x. So you have to ask yourself, like, what's changing and what's not changing? Um, okay, so identify, here's an example, identify the independent and dependent variable. A comprehension test was given to students after they had studied textbook material either in silence or with the TV on. Their performance was measured. So what was the independent variable? Well, the independent variable um, would be the thing that you, you did, okay? The dependent variable would be what what you what the result was so your grade on the test is the dependent variable it's dependent on whether you um, you listened silently as you read or you had no you know it was silent when you read or the TV was on so that's the independent variable um, the dependent variable would be it's gonna those things are gonna depend on the grades gonna depend on that Sorry, I got a little tongue-tied there. Um, okay, so let's talk about what relations lead us to. Relations lead us to the big ticket item for the year, functions. Now, we've already started talking about functions, how functions are um, have two variables, an x and a y. Um, they have inputs and they have outputs. Um, but a function, by definition, is a relation in which ele in, in when it's each element of the domain is a paired with exactly one element in the range. That's the mathy definition, right? Like, oh, I, kids get this confused all the time, so I'm going to make it clear. Here's a vending machine, okay? A function um, ha can have, for every x, only one unique y. Okay, so let's pretend that I go to the vending machine, okay? And I want those Lay's potato chips right there. And let's just say that the um, I had to press A8. If I press A8 and the only thing that comes out is Lay's potato chips, then this would be a function. But if I get press A8, so we're t A8 is acting like our input, okay? And the Lay's would be our output. If I press A8 and I could get Lay's or M&M's, that is not a function. I'd actually be mad, right? If I wanted those Lay's potato chips and, I, and the M&M's came out when I pressed A8, I would be mad. I'd say that this machine is broken. So that would not be a function. Um, so what I always tell kids to do is to look for the same X value but different Y values. This means it's not a function. 
So the same x with different y's. That means something like this. If I give you 1, 5 and 1, 7. That's the same x value, but I could get different outputs. Now, you can have repeated y values, but you can't have repeated x values with different y's, okay? So that's what makes something a function. All right, so let's, let's try that. So am I a function? Here I have a set of a relation, a set of ordered pairs. I look at all my x's. I don't see any repeated x's, so I'm good. It's a function. Yes. Okay, so then I go to the next relation. I have four sets of ordered pairs. I look, I see I have a three here and a three here. So I have repeated x, x's, so I need to now check their y's. They have different y's, so it's not a function. Okay, all right, now I look at it graphically. Here's a graph, I have some ordered pairs. Now, you gotta be really careful with the graph. So I wanna look at points. Um, so I know that this is negative two, negative two. This is uh, one, one. This point right here is one, um, zero, and this point right here is one, one. So look, I see those repeated x's here and here. They're both repeated x's. They have different y's, so not a function. And here's a graph, another graph, where I actually connected points. I, I, I have a sideways parabola here, and we're going to learn about that this year. Um, and I can see that right here at 2, this point is 2, 2, and this point right here is 2, negative 2. So it has repeated x's with different y's. It's not a function. Now, this might, this one might get in your memory going because in Algebra 1, you might have learned about something called the vertical line test. That's going to be talked about in the next video. So um, hopefully this was helpful and have a great day.